Welcome back to The Band Guide. I'm your band guide, Colin, and this is another video in the 5-Minute Logic Expert Series where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for recording, mixing, and mastering in Logic in 30 days. And today, we're talking about gain staging. Now, this video is really just going to be focused on one hack, one kind of trick for gain staging that I found to be really helpful in specific situations that I don't know how I would have learned if I didn't just happen to see someone who do it, and I said, hey, how did you just do that? Because I had no idea you could do that. Uh, so I'm excited to share this with you because I don't see a lot of people talking about it, and I know I wouldn't found it if I hadn't seen somebody doing it. Uh, but let's talk really quickly about gain staging. So gain staging is the idea basically that you're setting all of your individual track volumes, and I don't mean your faders, I mean your regions. If we look in logic here, these are your regions. So setting your regions to be at kind of the optimal volume. Now this varies track to track what the optimal volume is, and people have different opinions on this. The big thing that I would say is don't get too consumed with this. Don't get really obsessed with gain staging. It is something that uh, you could spend forever thinking about and forever trying to get right, but ultimately it's not really necessarily going to make your mix better unless your volumes were all over the place when you recorded them. And that's kind of the case here. It's not really the case, but it's kind of the case here. But as I said, a lot of people have different philosophies on this. My view is that I only really adjust it if things are all over the place or if I just really want to try to get it a little bit more consistent uh, because I found that it was too quiet or too loud when it was going into certain plugins and it wasn't really interacting the way that I wanted it to. So this example today, these are drums that were recorded up in DC for an upcoming release by my band Broke Royals. Uh, and if I just play some of them, you'll hear they sound great. There's nothing wrong with them. So nothing wrong, I've done some basic processing on there, but they're not necessarily the exact levels that I want. They're kind of all over the place. You can see that some are uh, fairly loud, some are fairly quiet, and I just want them to be a little bit more consistent. So what I like to do is set all of my drum levels to peak at negative six, meaning the loudest hit is at negative six. And generally speaking, if the drums aren't too dynamic, then my tracks will be more or less where I want them to be. So the cool thing is that Logic has a way that we can just automatically set all of our tracks where the loudest peak is at negative six. This is something called normalizing, basically just setting it to one specific level. So the way we do this is we select all the regions here that you want to do this to, and you go up to functions and then go down to normalize region gain. Now, typically this will default to like collective selection. Uh, it might be loudness. We want to have this on individual tracks because I'm not worried about what the total selection is going to do. I'm worried about what the peak volume of individual tracks are. And then in my case, I like to have my drums hitting at negative six at their peak. So we've set this to negative six for our target level. I hit apply and you'll see if I undo it, you'll see several of these regions, some got louder, some got quieter, right? So this kick drum up here turned down and then several of these tracks turned up. Now. There's no right or wrong level here. Some people like to have their volumes where all their faders are sitting right at zero. That's never been my preference for some reason. I don't really know why that is, but some people prefer to have that. Again, there's no right or wrong way. What I just want to show you is this really cool, quick way that you can normalize a bunch of regions without having to go through and one by one do it uh, manually. It's just much, much faster. So there you go. There's a lot of ways that you could use this. Another example would be if you just recorded a bunch of tracks a little bit too quiet and you want to bring them up and you don't want to make sure that they don't peak as you turn up their volume, you could bring them all up so they negative, they peak at negative three, for example. That's something that I'll do. I think vocals, it's pretty common that I just want to make sure they peak around negative three. Typically, that will get my RMS around the right level or my average volume, which is typically a kind of digital sweet spot, all that good stuff. Neither here nor there. The big thing is just how fast this can be and how helpful that can be to just quickly get things set at healthier levels if they're recorded quiet or kind of just recorded all over the place. Before you go, if you don't already have it, be sure to grab my six-step checklist to a pro mix. It's completely free and it goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do it anywhere. But obviously here we're talking about logic. It's completely free. So be sure to grab that. If this video is helpful. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow with another five minute logic expert. One thing at a time, I can only